Good morning and welcome to the Great Journey Podcast. I'm Caitlin Cleary here with Sensei Marty Callahan, and we have a podcast for you today called The Importance of Testing Yourself. Mm -hmm. I, for one, not a big fan of tests. I don't like pressure. I like comfort and ease. But mm -hmm. as the diamond proves, you need yeah. the pressure yeah. to refine yourself, right? Yes. So what do you have to share with us today? Yeah. Yeah. So so testing, uh, it can be anxiety inducing and uh, fear inducing. Um, and I think the, the main reasons is people don't want to um, face public humiliation. Uh, I mean, who does? Yeah. And um, if they get a poor grade on a test, they don't perform to the level they'd like to, mm -hmm. then they feel that they, they're, they could be humiliated in some way. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, in order to face that and to deal with that, that negative side to it, I think you have to um, really get to the point where you don't care. Yeah. You don't care what other people think. Right. And, and as in the previous podcast we were just talking about was um, the people in the world that love you and the people in the world that hate you mm -hmm. and the people that are going to shame you or humiliate you in public. Those are the people that hate you. Right. They don't want what's best for you. They, right. They're trying to destroy you. Yeah. And, um, and so uh, you just don't listen to them. You just mm -hmm. don't care about them. Mm -hmm you care about what the people who want what's best for you what they have to say right um, and so once you get that under your belt and you know how to do that now you can test yourself and testing yourself is going to tell you what you can do mm -hmm. and what you can't do mm -hmm. and these are very important feedback and if you're in those abilities of what you can do and what you can't do that's changing all the time mm -hmm. you're adding to it it's like a, a river that's flowing. The water that's going by you is never the same. Right. It's always new. Right. And so your life is always new. It's always changing. Right. And if you um, if you take the lessons that that you're learning and you apply them, then um, then you can see yourself. You know, how are you good at applying these lessons here today? Yeah. And so that's testing yourself. Right. And. Um, and also, like with skills, even like riding a bicycle, for mm -hmm. example, uh, a kid may have learned how to ride a bicycle when he was five or six years old. Mm -hmm. But then how about when you're 35 years old right? Uh, or 65 years old? Can right. you still ride that bicycle the same way you could when you're five years old? Right. You know, maybe you can not do it better. Way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe not. Um, and so you have to you're, you're continuously testing yourself to see what you can do and what you can't do. Mm -hmm. And if you're um, take, approaching this with the idea that you're benefiting from it, you're doing this for yourself, you're mm -hmm. testing yourself, it's not other people testing you, right. but you might go into a test that's conducted by other people, but you don't care what other people think about you. What, what's important to you is that you get to see how you're performing. And the, the test is for you. Absolutely. And other people might tell you that, no, you didn't do so well. You go, okay, right. good. Now that helps me. That helps me because I get that feedback. Right. Yeah. And actually, and when you bring up the student getting grades, you know, you think mm -hmm. of the big red C or something yeah. on the page. Yeah. Typically, the first thought is, yeah. what does my teacher think about me? And yeah. did anyone else see what my grade was? Yeah. So the focus is outward yeah. and you wind up with the humiliation. Yep. But if you, like you were saying, if you eliminate that fact, then you can look at the grade as how you can fix your situation yep. for yourself. Yep. All the rest of it's just interference yes. with you being the best that you could be. Yep. And then along with this goes the concept of confidence mm -hmm. and building confidence. Mm -hmm. So um, um, confidence is the foundation that you have to do something and succeed at, in life. Mm -hmm. uh, and confidence is the belief that you have that you can accomplish this thing or, or whatever it happens to be. And what I tell kids is that they come into school and I point to the door over there and I say, do you believe that you can stand up and walk over to the door, push the door open and walk outside? Mm -hmm. Of course, every kid can do that, mm -hmm. simply enough. So yes. So they, I explained to them that they're confident that they can do that. How did you develop that confidence? You develop that confidence by doing that thing over and over and over again. Right. And so um, the way that we practice, the way that we build confidence in the dojo is by having the students start with simple, simple 
things and have them to get really, really good at those simple things one at a time and then start to add to those. And then as you add to them, then you start to put together this complex set of skills. Right. Um, and I believe you, you were telling me the other day um, about um, uh, approach towards teaching. Was it was it you or was it somebody else? That there is um, going home, you know. yeah, <laughs> there's the mastery approach. Yes. Yes. And the spiral approach. And the spiral approach. Right. And, so tell me again what the spiral so the approach is. The spiral method or spiral yeah. approach. And this specifically with math is really yeah. where it's implemented. Yeah. Is so you may cover a math lesson and you might go over five different concepts. And so on the particular page of 20 problems, yeah. all mixed in are different concepts. That yeah. would be the spiral method. And yeah. each time it builds, but yeah. you're still, your mind is colluded with multiple things going on. Yeah. The mastery approach would take yeah. one specific thing, say adding fractions, for example. Yeah. And you add fractions and add fractions and add fractions for maybe a whole unit. Yeah until it is mastered yeah. before you move on to the next one. Yes. Now, I'm sure this book is a minus is to both ways. I yes. preferred the mastery approach just from yeah. homeschooling. That's what I've liked. Yeah. Um, but yes, it builds that a different kind of foundation and a confidence building. Yeah. And I would say uh, uh, there are, depending on the level of the student involved, mm -hmm. when, if the student is a beginner, mm -hmm. then they're going to need, they're going to benefit more from the mastery approach. Right. But if a student has already mastered certain skills, mm -hmm. then they want to put those skills together right. in some um, exercise. So what we yeah. do is we do combinations. Mm -hmm. So um, a combination is a series of movements um, in, in a particular order. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but in order to, before you can do that combination, you have to start with very simple skills mm -hmm. and you master those simple skills and then you put them together. Right. Um, and, um, and so I think really, you know, I, I don't think there's, I think both approaches spiral and mastery mm -hmm. that they're both beneficial and they have to use, be used together, but I do believe, replaced, yeah. yeah, I do believe that the mastery approach should come first. Yes. You get those basic yeah, skills. Yeah, early first. element indicators mm -hmm. and such. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Good. All right. Well, there's your little lesson for today. Thank you so much for listening and be working on that confidence and stop worrying about what other people think. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you're going to bed with yourself, right? Okay. Have a great day.